Hello, folks, and welcome back after a nice little break. I am your friendly neighborhood Shoutcaster Shar again on the caster's desk. And with you is Simplock, previously on the interview, but I'm back. Got my new hat on. I'm the caster, caster hat. And we're going to be bringing to you Super Late Reveal versus Blue Bayou Zoo. I mean, just look at you. You are the caster now. And I don't know about yeah, you, but that you was know, cool. I, I'm, I'm gaming, I'm interviewing, I'm casting. They, they got me doing everything back here. Is is there nothing you can't do? <laughs> well, I'm probably not allowed to play Zed on broadcast, so. Well, I think we might have to fix that at some point. <laughs> uh, Either um, way, let's, okay, okay, okay. Let, let's take a look at this. Okay, so I noticed that there's a double ban penalty on the side of Super Late Reveal. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the reason was for that, but they're choosing to use Victor for their primary ban uh, to come out. Great choice, taking that away from Mizuza. Fantastic control mage in the mid lane. And in the meantime, we've got the Xerath, Maokai, and Hecarim being taken away from SLR. Fairly good champion to, uh, to just kind of get rid of taking off the map and immediately locking in the Nocturne. It's kind of early to see that. Yeah, really interesting uh, already. I'm sure Mizuza is having a blast right now. No stranger to getting a triple, even five band. Uh, so having those two extra bands to work with, probably a huge relief from Mizuza. He's going to be able to get a sweet, sweet comfort pick, which I'm sure he's loving. The Maokai is just incredibly strong this patch after the, the mini rework and the power shift and just is a strong champion. You play it support, you play it top lane, it's a tank, it engages, it's got point and click CC, percent max health damage on, on Q. Overall, just an amazing champion. Xerath is a little odd, but I think it makes sense knowing that Guilty has had a really great performance on it so far. And it matches really well to most of Mizuza's champion pool, which is kind of shorter range, sustained damage, hyper carries. Uh, and Xerath can kind of play outside that range and threaten, which is pretty annoying. Makes sense to ban that away. Yeah, it's, it's definitely good to take that away. And we are seeing Udyr picked up right there uh, for the side of BBZ. Uh, I think this is the official first time we've seen it on the Rift. Uh, the first time it actually showed up was technically not supposed to have been played, but oh well, it is what it is. Uh, and then I, it's, I'm not totally sold on the new rework. I feel like there's some issues with it in the top lane, but I keep getting told, no, you're wrong. And so I'm like, fine, I'll yeah, accept it. I don't, it. I don't know what you're on, Sherrigan, because... This champion is bonkers good. I I don't, I don't know. I think it's it's probably. What do you not like situations. about it? it? It's one of those situations where if I'm not good with it, it must be bad. Okay, okay. But have you ever seen Red play Udyr top? I have People not. People start banning I... that because Red absolutely slaps on Udyr. He runs. He stuns. He does all the old Udyr 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 stuff. But but. The change is that you're playing a stat check melee bruiser with a point and click stun who has a Nivea ult. That's insane. It's a Nivea ult that follows you. It's, yeah, I guess. I mean, you can't run away because of the slows and it does damage. You, you and then it Ryla. You get it for free. <laughs> This is true, and I mean, if you throw a Glacial on there or have a Seraphine on your side, then that's pretty devastating, too. Okay, yeah. I, can, I, I can see where you're coming from that. Either I way, think though, he doesn't on. really... He doesn't fit on every team comp, that's for sure. He's a very this specialized champion, and he's a bruiser, but he has no... Okay, sure, Storm is really good for team fighting, um, and that kind of is what made him good, right? Because before, Udyr was kind of relegated to a split pushing or utility role into the late game. Uh, but now, Udyr actually has pretty good team fight scaling with the AoE Storm damage. Uh, the issue with Udyr is that he doesn't... Storm is good, and but it's still no Maokai ultimate, it's no Malphite ultimate, it's no Orn ultimate, it's not even as good as Set ultimate. You don't really have an ultimate ability, right? You have to be really conscientious and thoughtful about your double casts. And those mm -hmm. casts tend to be more impactful in like smaller interactions and skirmishes or in situations where you can get an extended fight and use two awakened abilities. Uh, so Udyr doesn't really fit in a team fight based composition, which is, you know, I say that and we actually have it paired with Aphelios and Quirky who are really strong scaling champions. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have a ways to layer, you know, point click CC. They have Nautilus ultimate, they have Udyr stun. And if you get stunned one time, you're going to eat a big one to the face and Aphelios ultimate, and that is probably enough damage to kill a lot of the characters that Super Late Reveal has locked in so far, but probably not that Galio. Uh, you know, Galio is going to definitely provide some great uh, defensive tr uh, utility for SLR. I do want to say that it's kind of interesting seeing these two bot lanes with the Cog Lulu on the side of SLR and the Aphelios Nautilus on the side of BBZ. Definitely going for a scaling sort of style, but 
a very different way of getting there. We're going to be seeing War Leader trying to look for those engages, trying to jump on top of Fang, trying to get those hard fights. But unfortunately, Lulu is going to negate so much of that. So it's very defensive and very reactionary in the side of SLR. And I think adding the Galio and the Darius is a great choice because those are both going to be really, really strong frontliners. And you're going to be getting so much damage coming out from the Darius that it's basically going to start bleeding through a lot of what we already see on the side of BBZ and the Udyr and the Nautilus that are going to be initiating that engage. And if poor Corky gets caught, that's going to be one cleaved in too little Yordle. Oh, we spent all this time talking about Udyr top lane, and it's actually going to be Udyr jungle. I like Udyr jungle a little bit less than in top lane. I think he scales really well with gold now, but I don't think it's bad in the jungle either. And Dax is definitely a player who can play that sort of high economy style. Uh, they have Mizuza and Dax in these really high economy farming champions. They're going to build towards that scaling mid and late game. They have Ord items, they have Aphelios. They have a lot of really good late game tools if they can make it through that early and mid game. On uh, the other side, super late reveal, you know, I think uh, Fang over Fang, uh, drinking some of that UB Kool-Aid, because I do see one of my favorite combos, Nocturne Galio. And they're going to be using that to find access on the back line. And it seems a little weird at first, right? Because you're thinking, oh, Lulu Cog, why are you pairing it with this strong global engage? And it's actually because uh, you can use the darkness and the engage to cover your backline. They can't really engage effectively on the Kogma if they can't see. They have their eyes closed. I didn't like it until I saw the Darius locked in. And when I saw the Darius, everything kind of made sense. Darius kind of glues together the calm. And he's someone who can play in between uh, Cog Lulu in the back and Nocturne Galley in the front. And that'll kind of connect everything so that they can hold space, give Kogma the space to hit, and then front to back team fight. Yeah, uh, I, I do like the Orn pickup as well, like uh, for the side of BBZ with those ornaments like you mentioned, because that's just going to give BBZ that little extra bump to their scaling, a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra utility, a little bit of extra CC. And that's going to be so important if the SLR comp is allowed to start running away. They'll need those items to come back into the game or extend their snowball even further to make it that much harder for them to catch up. Yeah, it, something that I think was interesting is that, I mean, we didn't quite mention it, but oh, we'll have to hold that thought. Fang or Fang bravely, he just sprints it. He just, he just full sends it to their blue buff and wards it. That's, He's like, look, I'm what? warding this. Nothing That's you so can upsetting. do. It's so upsetting. It's like, no. Uh, War Leader was even there. If, if they, man, I, I guess you can kind of read that BBZ is a weak five stack at level one, but still, the disrespect. Um, fun fact, if you buy Sweeper and you kill a ward at level 1, and you share the EXP with 3 or fewer individuals, that is enough EXP to give solo laners a level up off of the first wave instead of the first melee minion of the second wave. So you can never make that happen, it can sometimes snowball a lane one. Uh, oh, and they get the Sweeper! Oh, That was, Wait, but that was almost a little bit troll right there, I wasn't sure. I'm not was. sure if they <laughs> ding off that... <laughs> You know, I, that's cool, though, because I just talked about it and they actually, they actually execute that. You know, it's um, almost like they play League of Legends at a high-skilled level and know what they're doing. Yeah, wait, is this the premier uh, format in the Friend or Foe tournament, Mythic League? Oh. I heard we'll the players are pretty good in this, this format. Oh, yeah. Orphic, getting that level 1 threat. Oh, Geico, does he respect it? Okay, okay, he learned his lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, he's learned, think, like, wait, well, well, maybe he's learned his lesson. I think Geico might be what the matchup because or can actually fight Darius level one. yeah okay he finally skills Q I, you can actually space Darius at level one because sure you lose if you fight to the death but or can actually just tether you with Q and play the level one comfortably so I wonder if Geico's a little unfamiliar with that matchup but it probably won't end up being too consequential Probably not, um, but I do have a feeling that I like Orphic's uh, audacity, just kind of stepping up, being like, look, I'm going to control this lane. This lane is mine. I will make you mine uh, and deal with that. Uh, in the meantime, Mizuza here getting some decent chunk onto Guilty and Escape getting brought almost to half health before three minutes. Yeah, I know. We're already chunked out, and Avelius is... A champion who, oh, Ooh, wait, nice going hook, right with level anyway, two. Jeff not respecting that. Level two going over to the side of BBZ as they win that trade. Well, just like that, they equalize that. And I'm sure when we uh, refresh the scoreboard and fix that bug, we'll see a little bit of the CS condition for uh, the lanes on the map. But, you know, um, overall, uh, Escape really salvages that late state. It was not looking very good. 
Uh, but with that uh, heads up play by War Leader, they get the level 2 trade back and punish. So overall, Escape is still not thrilled to have this wave slow building, but it'll be okay and you can farm it out. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just kind of based on what we're seeing so far in these skill matchups, where exactly do you think we're going to be seeing the most jungle play coming out on this rift? I'm having a feeling we're going to be seeing it in that top lane. Uh, we see them pathing both toward the top side, and there's a little bit of a scuffle over top crab. Nocturne does secure it, but Dax did choose to full clear, whereas Fang over Fang is uh, skipping the Krug. So even though the crab is secured by Fang over Fang, Dax is in a pretty fine position, may even be able to come out ahead if they secure the bottom crab. And with the uh, Luru Tef taking an early cheater recall, the bottom lane is going to be in position to protect this. Can we mm -hmm. get production to refresh scoreboard really fast? That's the O key. That would be great. Yeah, just be able to re Thank you, thank really you. Appreciate there that. There we go. Shout out to FOF Production, by the way. All kinds of weird stuff happens oh, on FOF oh, Broadcast. We got a bit of a fight lane here in the mid lane. That's going to be the flash out of Dax Taunt coming in on Guilty as we see Dax Brock exceptionally low. Escape trying to do what they can. Gravitum getting some nice slows on the back line, but Kogma has just got so much health. He's able to chunk out so many members of SLR that they're just, or BBZ that they just have to run away, and that is going to be Bottom Crab secured. Well, we've got a bit of a scuffle going on here in the top lane. A little bit of a confused fight. I, both teams just decide handshake that. Whoa, Geico looking for the kill window there. And Orvik actually has to flash. Lots of damage and a flash coming out from uh, Geico. It does mean that we get first blood going over to BBZ. He's going to be saving a lot more than 15% on his car insurance with a kill like that. Because he's crashing the wave. He's going to deny experience. And Orphic does not have teleport to collect this wave. This is a huge snowball potential waiting for Geico to, to get play. And he had teleport too. He didn't even have ignite. He just straight solo kills Orphic on the Darius. And you know, I think at a lower level of play... Uh, Darius is a much easier time playing this matchup. You know, Darius can space, he has healing, he can take the sustain all in, or um, Orn has to be really careful. Uh, but I think uh, Orn actually has uh, advantageous trades and a lot of level breakpoints in this lane, and Geico really showing his mastery of the champion, his understanding of laning phase, finds those kill windows to trade in those short, quick trades and slowly chip Darius out and gets that kill conversion. That's really impactful. Is those brittle stacks do so much more damage? Me than too. Kind of it's exactly like Sejuani's permafrost uh, and Leona's stun burst. If it actually manages to go off, uh, it, it's kind of one of those like hidden techs that if you know how to use it properly, it's going to help you win a lot of these trades. Uh, we do see that Geico didn't use the teleport; they just walked back to lane, so they're actually able to have that should a team fight start breaking out. Uh, they are kind of delaying using it though. It might cause a little bit of a mismatch whenever it does finally evolve should that end up happen when that happens later one thing we need to keep an eye on is that guilty is getting really outclassed in the middle lane right now this matchup is not great in lane early just because corky has that long range auto attack threat but it shouldn't be this bad gallery should be able to get enough farm with q and maybe it'll equalize a little bit if you can ex absorb most of this wave uh that's mm -hmm. crashing uh, we'll have to keep a close eye on whether guilty is able to use this tempo cheeky fang hiding oh, in the bush Geico doesn't know but he's able to go unstoppable and dash his way out very safely done. That was kind of entertaining to see yeah, Fang get there. <laughs> I like the creative lane gank attempt because Nocturne doesn't really have anything to do right now. I have some downtime Woo, to that make that play happen. He's going to force out the flash, but the Todd's still going to go through. Mizuza not quite able to escape burning a summoner spell. Yeah, so Nocturne uh, was just, you know, you have some downtime. You're waiting for your bottom cast to spawn him. Uh, Fangar Fang uses that time really well, looking for that lane gank opportunity. Even if you don't get anything for it, that's the kind of thinking that will get you ahead in the jungle. It's like a low cost opportunity. Sure, you go up to your bottom camps a little bit later, but it's honestly fine. Uh, and in the mid meanwhile, in the mid lane, Mizusa did have to play defensively against Guilty's all in, and that's going to be pretty huge. Not having flash available on the score key means you are a ripe target for a potential paranoia gank. Uh, but Fanger Fang isn't quite level 6, so that's not going to be on the table quite yet. I want to see how Guilty and Fanger Fang use their double ultimate combo together, because that's really going to determine the pace of the game. They're already behind a lot of gold as a team. They're behind in top lane after getting the Darius into Ornn. Um, they are behind in mid just off of the farm, so if... If, uh... They aren't able to make something happen with Guilty and Fanger Fang, I think they're really going to struggle in the mid and late game. It, they are going to I think they're going to struggle exactly. Um, however, like I mentioned earlier with those ornaments, they do have a option to help them kind of get back in. If one of their carries is able to start pulling themselves ahead, uh, Aphelios has been doing a pretty decent job 
uh, CSing in order to make sure that they stay ahead of this Kogma. But this freeze that's currently built right now kind of puts them in a bad spot. Nocturne could be looking for a roam down bot lane very, very soon. We do have Windrake up as the first dragon. The movement speed, I think, is far more useful for BBZ because it would allow Udyr to be able to get into these lanes a lot faster uh, because he just doesn't really have the best gap closers. He's got to throw his ultimate, which goes away from him first. I mean, sure, sure, sure again. But you do have to remember SLR has um, has Darius, Orphic on the Darius, and they have mm -hmm. Luru on Kog'Maw. Those are champions who value move speed. They have Guilty on Galio. Running fast, that's kind of awesome on Galio. Nocturne can get the, the fear tether. So I, I don't know, I can feel both these teams kind of like move speed. It's a good stat. Oh, they love it. They both want it. I'm just saying that I think BBZ would benefit far more from it. Either way, uh, I do yeah. expect to see, we see Nocturne right now working uh, on uh, up over by this Rift Herald. Does look like they may, uh, they're waiting for that crab to spawn. Might be looking to prevent this lane gank coming up from Dax. Dax kind of Kind of caught between Ooh, a river yeah. and a heart. This is an interesting 2v2 situation. Normally, I'd favor Nocturne and Galio because of their global ultimates, but if uh, Mizuza and Dex are already linked up, then that global mobility much less relevant for building tempo, and I don't think they just win straight up 2v2ing at this point, especially with Galio not having reset in a while. Mm -hmm. No, unfortunately not. Uh, they do need to back in order to get some of those items, spend some of that gold they've got sitting in their pocket. Uh, we do see that Darius was rotating down a little bit and then decided to back. So that was probably a good uh, feint by the side of SLR in order to make be like, hey, we're going to make it look like uh, Darius is coming down to make it a 3v2, but just back instead. So that kind of prevented uh -oh. that game. All about the mind games. Build order alert, Joshi screaming right now if he's on in chat. Uh, it looks like Mizusa going for the crit Corky uh, instead of the traditional uh, and more popular recently, the Ludens, uh, Ludens poke build. Uh, I think crit Corky is still fine. It's a very different identity. Uh, you still have pretty good poke, but you don't have like the best poke in the game. It just becomes like saw strong poke. But in exchange, you get this huge short range burst damage. Uh, that can let you chunk out frontliners and tanks. And I think in terms of adaptation for this specific game, it makes a lot of sense. You're going to have to punch through Galio. You're going to have to punch through Darius. And speaking of Darius, hold the thug is yep. Orphic. Orphic is getting jumped on right now. We see Geico just able to easily walk away, though. Orn is just so tanky. It is like, unfortunately, yeah. they just aren't quite able to rip through him. I don't uh, think this is the place to visit if if you're a uh, fan over fan. You need to be using that Paranoia ultimate into the bob side of the map. You're not going to kill Geico, and even if you do, sure, you kill Orn one time. Like, this, that's not going to change the outcome of the game. He's already farming. He's already accelerated. You need to go to the bomb side and activate Luru, but they're not able to get much out of it. And they're trapped in this weird vertical jungle situation. Uh, fan over fan kind of get it, having the better... Uh, uh, worst end of the stick, rather, yep. uh, and Dax finding the better end of the exchange. Yeah, Dax no, doing a very, very good job playing that, uh, knowing that we had Fang over Fang over in the top side. It's like, hey, that's a free first dragon for us. Let's just go ahead and take that. I mean, it's not like it's going to be a lot of effort for us to take it. So they managed to pick that up. In the meantime, we've got a polymorphed Aphelios getting taking a lot of damage, but it's still plent plenty of health bar left for them. We can see now that the uh, gold has kind of, like, it's again, it's about two waves in the favor of BBZ. Uh, they are still able to hold that right there. It was a lot more a little Ooh, while ago. Nice tethering there by Mizuza, getting the microspacing to bait out the dash. Uh, and is able to reset quite comfortably here. Maybe even mm -hmm. shove in one more wave if he's greedy about it. Uh, but, you know, kind of, there. Ha this has been a low kill game. Uh, we've only had one major skirmish over bottom cut. That was actually won by the side of SLR. But, you know, the story of the game so far really has been Mizuza quietly farming, you know, making just solid plays, improving their position. You don't have to do anything fancy, and he's just building this CS lead, improving the position, improving the position, developing that gold. And oh, I'm just not sure. Call. Can can SLR do anything about this scaling crit Corky and this unpunished Aphelios? I, I don't know. I'm not sure they can ever engage. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hard for them to choose and engage. Uh, but basically going to be waiting on Tef. Ooh, good lockdown with the Gravitum right there. We got Unstoppable uh, Co right there looking for the engage on Orphic, choosing not to go in. Wasn't quite able to get an angle on that knockup. Uh, I do think now that we see Ophelios, the snowball has kind of already started rolling. Uh, they do 
have it moving down the hill. Tef taking so much damage, getting rooted out. Hook's gonna go flying as we see War Leader looking for that hard engage. Massive ultimate coming out, but Escape is taking so much damage as Luru is just pummeling him with those shots. He has to run away. And then we've got the Guilty ultimate coming in to basically kind of seal that fight off and basically and say, if you continue, you are going to die. And then oh, speaking got, of death. Yeah, we got a nice bounce up. right here, but a good dodge by Orphic, avoiding getting knocked up by the horn, uh, the Orn Goat. So that means that they are going to be able to get out of this fight. But unfortunately, right. they're going to have to retreat from the lane. Yeah, Orphic kind of got his uh, Avatar Aang, Bagua Jong style uh, ankle breaking going on there. He just he yukes Geico completely around the opposite side, stepping around his back. Uh, so pretty heads up play there by Orphic. Uh, that bottom play was interesting, you know. Uh, it looks fairly even. Lou's maybe looking to turn that. It's always hilarious to watch the new Ghost AD carry meta. Both AD carries just crack. Oh, bang over bang. All right, he, he'll finish that eventually. Anyway, it's yep, so funny to fine. watch both AD carries just both pop Ghost and then both sprint away from each other. You know, it's just, yes, this is the way the game is meant to be played. This, this, this feels <laughs> terrible, really. It's all about being speedy boys. That's that's all you got to do. Uh, speaking of speedy, Geico is not oh, no. very Geico fast right now. He, in so fact, right here. That is can't really move. Really unfortunate. He's caught now uh, in that shadow ground, and that is going to be a nice cleave coming out as the executioner's axe falls on his head. Uh, and now we've got Zuza. Yep, they're trying to continue. Oh, that's big a damage! A lot of damage. The rocket is the big one. Is too good. Trying to get around. Oh. Dumps managed to pick him up. We've got the nice Gatling gun able to finish off that He's killing there. Oh. Oh. He is getting poked out so hard right now, and unfortunately, Nocturne is going to be able to slice and dice and kill him right there. Galico, uh, Galio coming up as well to the top lane. In the meantime, in the bot, we see that all of the go buttons have been pushed as we've got fights breaking out everywhere. Poor old BBC Escape is having to once again retreat, taking so much damage from the poke out of oh, Luru. Escape. Luru getting sped up, the ultimate dropping artillery shot, not able to find it, flash is used. That is going to be no summoner spells available for either ADC. And as they just, oh man, such a spicy fight. Man, it's so interesting. You know, like this entire sequence happens because of that early skirmish bottom lane. Guilty ults the buzz. Again, I, I can't talk because escape may be in danger. Oh my god, no war leaders going in. He's trying okay, to. Okay, He's can I talk? Engage. Okay, okay. all right. Thanks, line. BBZ. All right, all right. So, you know, this whole sequence for the last two and a half minutes, it all started off that bot play. Luru and Escape were fighting each other. It looks like BBZ has the pick on the Tef, but Luru playing aggressively forces escape to disengage and when guilty comes in with the hero's entrance it seals the play it terminates the play but with galley ultimate no longer available that is the cue uh to play to the top side of the map for bbz uh you know they get that top play and unfortunately for fang over fang he's determined to play the strong side top and he's forcing the play over and over again you know if at first you don't succeed it's just you know, try, try again. Try, try again, <laughs> and maybe fifth time, fifth time's the charm. He eventually gets the top gank, but with Mizuza, you got to be happy trading one for one with that kill. You're quirky, you're scaling, get that shield bow, and we also saw the value of that shield bow proc. And Mizuza living for a very long time in that exchange and felt confident going for that trade kill. Walking to the dragon this time with the package. This is uncontestable by SLR. Yeah, there's going to be no way for them to go engage. If they even try, Corky's just going to drop that package down, make it so there's an impassable ground of slowing damage. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like this game is kind of slipping out of SLR's fingers. Uh, but considering their name is Super Late Reveal, uh, it could be that that's just what they're trying to do. They're just playing for that late game, playing for that end game where they're going to take as much time oh, as they need. Oh, Unfortunately, no. they might not be have enough time as we see Lord, War Leader jumping right on top of Luru. The oh, wait, wild that... growth, though, is going to cause wait. Luru to be able to survive for quite a bit longer. He's going to be massive, and that is going unfortunately not going to be enough, though, as he does go down. Tef getting healed, but unfortunately, they're going to be taken down as well as we just start to see the power of this team comp coming out. Dax looking for the hard jump on, does manage to find it. The taunt only catches the Udyr, means that the rest of the members of BBZ are able to absolutely shred him. And now we're going to see the turret fall, and that is going to be huge as we start to see Blue Bayou Zoo cracking this game wide open. SLR gets a massacre there at the bottom tier one tower. 
I think I'm not sure what happened. SLR just was really greedy, and they just simply lost track of Corky P uh, Package Timer. They engaged right when it's about to expire. Oh, hold that thought, Fang over oh Fang. Oh my goodness, Fang over Fang going in hard, <laughs> but dude, you're one v three. That's not where you want to be. Kogma arrives, but it's oh, too late as Baby oh! Fang takes him down. That is going to be Escape picking up a kill. Mizuza going on a rampage. Kogma is gone, and that is going oh. to be an easy oh. tier two turret for BBZ. SLR is just. They're on the ropes. They're trying to make something happen, oh, but no, I look, we gotta call even win. It's gonna be a dead executioner. Oh my goodness, SLR, they're crumbling right now, and I think this is just Blue Bayou's game to win. Uh, it looks like that at first the play is gonna go bad. Uh, Tef gets a great flash ultimate onto Luru to extend his life. Guilty comes in with the hero's entrance. And I thought for sure this was an SLR win, but Fang over Fang was still in the middle lane. Even with their double globals composition, they are outnumbered in the bottom side of the map. Azusa rotating instantly with the package that had just a couple seconds left. And SLR not doing a good job playing around that cooldown. They're not able to time it out, and they overcommit to that play, get routed. They lose first tower gold. They're not able to trade the top lane tower fast enough. I don't know. This game is looking tougher and tougher for SLR. It is looking very dire for SLR. They're kind of starting to choke on their own aspirations in this one. Dax, in the meanwhile, doing a great job just running around, finding those engages, getting the nice bit of damage off, showing why I was wrong about my assessment of Udyr. Uh, and it's just, we're, we're starting to see so many different ways that BBZ is able to just control this game in a whatever manner they want we're already seeing them posture around uh this top lane looking to pick up that second rift herald and that is going to be really really uh useful for them as they're just going to be able to crack so many of these turrets open with that push yeah they're going to bust this game open real fast uh and more importantly they have so much range advantage a uh, is a great scaling champion lulu can run away with the game if bbz plays incorrectly but the problem is that cogba does great amounts of damage when they have to run into you you press your w and it only lasts for a few seconds and if they simply time out your w fight you outside of your w range and then turn on you as soon as it runs out, Cogma is extremely useless. And because of the range advantage, and the fact that they're already behind, I, it's just hard for me to imagine a fight where Luru can Miracle Carry. Uh, it's going to be really, really difficult. Like, he's got to spend so much time now farming it up. He's already 30 CS down in regards to BBZ Escape. That's not including the kills and assists that have put an, a bit of extra gold in their pocket. Uh, so that means that it's just that much easier for this Aphelios to totally influence these fights and just completely control so much of the spacing, like you mentioned. And we're seeing right now, Darius is probably looking for an engage on this mid lane, but unfortunately, the vision line just allows them to kind of have this idea of where they need to watch out for the side of BBZ. Yeah, man, look at Mizuza already at two and a half items. That's that's so disgusting. Five, one, and one, 190 CS on Corky at 21 minutes. That and it is isn't a, evolved Muramana. It's not even like he's just built the item. terrifying. Yeah, oh man. He's actually building RSC second. That's not bad. I actually would really like to see Essence Reaper because I'm pretty sure with Essence Reaper Sheen proc, he will one-tap uh, any character <laughs> outside of SLR. But Rapid Fire can't make sense. Gives you that sustained auto-attack damage and the safety from the extended auto-attack. So no, no, no. Uh, it's not a mistake. It's just a different preference on how you choose to itemize in this position. Uh oh, we got a death bush waiting right here. Fang over Fang oh, about to walk into it. Gets cool. knocked in the face by an or uh, Udir jumping right on top of him, stunning him up. That's gonna be a nice taunt though, but it only manages to find once again another taunt coming out. Finds three members of BBZ, which is devastating. They're not able to get the damage out that they need. Not able to get the CC, and they're caught in this choke point. Orphic running into the back line manages to absolutely shred these health bar while Kogmo's in the back, just absolutely peppering them. They do manage to win this fight. The question is, though, are they able to continue it? Or going back in, trying to get onto Mizuza. We see the flash come out. He's not quite able to get away. Three members in that choke point. It's going to be devastating. Kogba getting the damage off. But is it going to be enough? He's now 1v1ing the Mizuza. It's the damage. It's so <laughs> Oh, my goodness. It's 4 for 4 at the end of the day. Neither side can do the dragon, hilariously enough. Both Luru and Mizuza are going to reset and we're going to sprint back and fight for the dragon one more time. Uh, Luru, oh, choosing to stay on the map has that red buff regen, kind of looking around maybe. Oh, this is all oh, but Mizuza gets back with package. I think it's just going to be another BBZ dragon capture. That is another uh, yeah, BBZ dragon capture. 
basically the best possible dragon fight you can get. Everyone just kind of waddles around for too long, and Orphic coming up huge in that fight, living way too long, especially with the Lulu steroid. But unfortunately, there's just not quite enough damage to seal off the kill against Mizusa. Lulu is out of mana and health, can't look for that last ultimate snipe. And um, yeah, with the respawns kind of desynced, BBC is just going to claim another dragon, which puts them on soul point with Ocean Soul on the table. It does put Ocean Soul on the table, although there is something kind of interesting about that fight. With how we saw it play out, it shows that SLR is still in this game. They are still a threat, and there is still a way for them to come back. They just need to fight around these choke points, get these good angles and these good picks, and they're going to be able to fight through these health bars. The healing from that one Ocean Drake, and if they manage to actually pick up Ocean Soul, is going to be really useful for BBZ, though. So we're going to have to see if SLR is able to counteract that. Yeah, something I'm loving from Azusa's play right now, and the BBZ as a whole, is they're doing such a great job playing around the Corky package. There's so many times when I see Corky in FOF, just rarely pick up the package for no reason. Nothing is up, no one's going to be fighting, there's nothing spawning for two minutes, the package just fizzles or is just used on some dumb wave clear play, and it's over. And that's such a huge waste of what is basically Corky's ultimate ability, right? It's basically a five minute cooldown ultimate ability. Uh, Corky Rockets are very, very good, don't get me wrong, but you need to be using that big cooldown to its full effect. And Mizusa doing an expert job of just that. He's saving it for those objective spawns. He's bringing it to where it needs to go. And with the threat of the package, even if you don't use it, SLR just has to look at the package, wait for it to time out, and Dragon's already dead by the time that happens, and it leaves him with very little counterplay. Mm-hmm. That's it, very, very true. And then right here, we've got, once again, the push in the mid lane. Uh, ornaments are not online yet, but they should be coming online very, very soon. And once they do, that's going to be a lot of extra damage uh, being put over onto this Gale Force, onto this Shield Bow. And then you're going to get that much more tankiness on the Locket and Sunfire Capes. So that's just going to make the entirety of BBZ that much more terrifying. Uh, it, I'm, I know that I said that... Uh, uh, SLR has to look for picks, but it's going to be really, really tricky to even find a pick that's able to like burn down a member of BBZ fast enough before the rest of them can show up. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just getting tougher and tougher. You know, I think they do have ways to make it happen, right? Because they do have Doctor and Galio still. Uh, but I just haven't really seen them combo effectively together. They're kind of using Nocturne Galio the same way you would use Jarvan Galio, but that is not how you're supposed to use Doctor and Galio. Um, Nocturne is different than, say, Jarvan Cataclysm, which you can throw defensively and use the hero's entrance as a defensive dock up to zone control. You can't do that with, with Doctrine Galio. Doctrine Galio has to use their ultimates proactively and aggressively. And I just haven't really seen Fang over Fang ever be hitting backline. He's not able to find those engages. Obviously, it's not as simple as just pressing R twice on a carry. Uh, you have to set up the vision, you have to set up your team, and you have to play for the picks, but they're just not moving together and fighting around Luru to double globals onto Luru when he gets dived. And it's, there's no proactive play, and the longer the game goes on and nothing happening, the better it gets for Blue Bayou. Yep, Fang over Fang, kind of uh, being a little cheeky going for this vision ward. We've seen people die for less. Uh, unfortunately, they are able to survive and do pretty well. However, the rest of the members of uh, SLR are oh, being Dax. taunted out. Dax has got oh, doing a really good job just running, and we got a huge taunt coming up, but it's not going to matter. As oh. you can see right there, you've got Orn able to go immune to that CC. He just kind of walks it away. Dax is immune. Uh huh. That's a good use of the uh, Galio, or not Galio, the Udir Awakening uh, on Indeed. that ability. Okay, so you know what's really cool? They when they reworked Udir, they they it's not the same animals anymore, right? Because they rebranded all of Udir spells to match their failure gods, right? Mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. old tiger is actually bear because it's Volibear Bear Lightning on his cube. And his storm is actually a Nivea storm. Um and the the ram is actually Orn. Right. And I don't know who the boar is. Yet. is. What is his boar? Is that not in the lore? Boar has not been revealed as far as I'm aware, uh, name wise. I've heard some people say that it's Bristle, which I think is dumb. Oh, okay. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no, and, like, Bristle doesn't know. heal, so, like, that's off the. Anyway, wouldn't it be so cool to, like, do, like, a Freljord Gods draft, and then you draft, like, Indivia mid, and then Orn top, and then Udir jungle, and. I would absolutely love to see some themed support. teams. I guess. Um, yeah, but, no. Yeah, you know, right? like, 
I am completely with you on that. I would love to see some themed teams, either themed around like the champions or the skin lines. Like yeah, I would love yeah. to see like a Space Odyssey team versus the Dark Stars. Oh, that'd be pretty <laughs> sweet. Oh man, I did, I think that would just be absolutely hilarious. And then you can throw in uh, the Freljordians versus Noxians. Okay, maybe so even the, the invasion of Ionia because. Because the Freljord comp is just OP, because Freljord has all the best champions. You have everyone with CC. Yeah, they, they've got a lot going for them. You're not wrong. Like, you could draft, like, five Freljord champions and be a legit UB draft. Like, Ash, AD carry, Braum support, Sidrani jungle, uh, Lissandra mid. The question is, would those uh, top, fighters like, actually join? Oh, look at this. We have... Uh, SLR looking for the hard engage, looking to start this fight up because Ooh. they know they want to get this soul, but we've already got BBZ go. running in to disrupt this huge Galio ultimate's going to come yeah. in. Picking up three members of SLR, of BBZ, they're going to get uh, CC oh, the so hard, but they don't have the health bars. They don't have the damage as these tanks just completely stall out. Escape on the back line, chasing down Tef, poor little Lu uh, Lulu not able to escape and is getting that kill, and that is just going to be devastating. As we can see now, this game is basically all she wrote for SLR. That's going to be Soul and with it. I think the game, uh, Boon Boy finds a kill in the back end, killing Tef alone in the jungle, the dark woods behind the dragon pit. Uh, with that kill for vengeance, BBZ is just comfortable resetting. This is the fight that, that SLR wanted, but it's too little too late. They're already behind. Their composition only functions from ahead. They get the big Nocturne ultimate, and it's coming into a huge heroic entrance from Guilty, who's been spectacular in the league so far, as well as in heroic, but... Uh, you know, it's just, it's too little too late. You get that big knockup, Luru's hitting, but there's too much damage. Uh, and as soon as Luru fails to dodge one skill shot, he gets by, hit by the Nautilus hook one time, or leader ends his life, Luru cannot hit, goes down instantly. And oh, After trying to go in it. for the ultimate, just a little bit too far, but look at this, we might be able to see Luru hey, on Luru, the back, Luru. peppering the shots, but the Ord using the split decision as they've called the Forge God on the back line, knocking Luru up, does mean that the Kogma is going to be disrupted, not able to continue fighting, and he's going to get absolutely shredded. That is absolutely devastating for SLR. That Baron was something they uh, needed to get back into this game. Yeah, I, I appreciate the effort to go with the Miracles. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, we're already behind. Like, the chance this works is like 30%, but if we do nothing, then we have like a 10% chance to win. 30 bigger than 10, so like, let's YOLO full send it. So I respect the commitment, you know, there's nothing I hate more than a team being behind and just slowly dying. Like, you should lose trying to get back to the game. Like, don't just roll over and die. So I respect that a lot, SLR. Playing to their outs, you know, maybe you get that Miracle Seal, you get the Objective Bounty, they can't see with Baron, you stall them out, you scale. There's a lot of things that can happen. But unfortunately, the cards just don't fall their way this time. And Fang over Fang is going to have to slink out of his base, maybe get a, a, a Krug camp or something. Uh, maybe, maybe get a red buff to his name even. Maybe we'll 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 see what they're able to get. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot available for SLR to actually be able to find on this map because uh, yeah. it's all just going to be gone. So not only are we'll they super to... far behind, they're starved out completely. Yeah, we'll have to keep watching Luru, who's been keeping his farm up decent, has Winsu, uh, uh, Hurricane, excuse me, and. Uh, the Titanic Hydra's on the way, so those are huge items for Kogma, but will it be enough? He's fighting against Orn itemed uh, Corky, Orn item Moon Boy, and it's just, I think Mizuzan Escape just clicked this guy, and with War Leader using point and click Nautilus knockup onto Luru, I just don't think there's room for him to outplay here. You, you, you chain that Nautilus knockup with the Orn knockup, with the Udir yeah, stun, he's, with the he's Orn double knockup. He's never moving. Never, ever, ever moving. No, there's nowhere for him to go. Uh, and you know, it's kind of funny. So we have so many different comeback mechanics into this game. You got the bounty system. You've got uh, the uh, like the increased XP gold in the jungle and such. The, it's kind of funny how once you get to this point in the game, there's nothing right. Riot hasn't put anything inside of the base yet to allow you to come back into the game uh, once your entire jungle is gone. So you know, maybe in the I mean, future we'll start seeing that. You kind of have your base structures. I, I think that is the thing that you get. You know, that's like, not a gold income though. That's just what do you mean? It is. <laughs> the waves come in. You farm them underneath your tower. That's nah, not. And then they lose waves because right, when your towers are dead, right. your waves slow push. There again, you know that, right? When you have fewer towers, yes. your waves get pushed in. I, I am aware. Your towers and the waves come in, then you farm them defensively in your tower. 
It's I'm aware. Mechanism. I'm aware. I'm just saying there's no free gold that Riot likes to give out. So we'll probably the see that. Out. Okay, anyway, we're fighting. <laughs> anyway, we got the fight coming right here. Uh, it's going to be a huge fight under this tower. As we can see, that Galio is just taking shot after shot. It's not really doing much in regards to their health bar. Uh, as that we just see the entirety of yeah. SLR just getting completely shredded. There is no defense under this tower, Zivilog. I thought you said these tower were supposed to help you keep stay alive during yeah, these Yeah, they were shooting, but I didn't really see the health bars change that much. I'm not sure what's up with that. Right, I should get on that real fast. Uh, but you know, yeah, just the combination of Moon Boy and Rocket Midget, just there's no counterplay. Uh, nope. They're too farmed, there's too many items, and uh, the spin Nautilus just, almost yeah, killing Nautilus. themselves by hooking a structure. Oh, I think <laughs> almost is run not that. Oh, here we go. Mizuza gets a sick frag on. Why is he building Blinding Crystal? Mizuza! This is a. I've been. I've witnessed a war crime. Someone called. <laughs> someone called NATO. C this is a violation of the Geneva, uh, Geneva the Convention. This is a war crime, but you know... Oh, what magic is this? They don't have any magic. <laughs> <laughs> they have two merchants. Well, you know, Galio is made of petrocyte, which is technically resistant to magic. Yeah, but are they resistant to Hextech bombs? Probably, no? actually. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would really think they would, they would be. I would think they would be. The, the bombs are probably much weaker in magic. Although there is that physical element that does decent damage. Yeah, honestly, Either way, it totally is... doesn't matter at that point in the game. He has four item Corky. Your fifth, your fifth item can be anything you want. I personally prefer Essence Reaver and Slot there. There's just not enough magic resist. At least he did not commit the cardinal sin of building Lord Dominic's regards on Corky, which does absolutely nothing because you do 80% magical damage. Uh, with you your know, auto attacks. interestingly enough, the Udir is the only member on the side of BBZ that did less damage overall in comparison to uh, uh, SLR. They're so I think it's kind of, yeah, yeah. They're the only one who did less damage. So I think Dax needs to step up their game. Obviously, they played very terribly this game. They were absolutely awful. Yeah, where's uh, the demonic embrace? Uh huh. Guy? Oh yeah, there, there's like, no demonic embrace. He's only got three items. items: frozen heart, force of nature. Come on. What? What demonic is this? A tank? Bus. No, Udyr should be doing damage. I think that's, that's also surviving. like the main reason why I prefer Udyr in the top side is that you get the higher economy. You can justify building demonic embrace in jungle. You tend to be on a more of a shoestring budget. You're laying your start taxing your camps. You start to hate yourself after 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so I think this is a really good adaptation of Udyr to like build defensively. And you also your teammates are Mizuza on Corky and Escape on Ophelios. These are. Hyper carry champions with excellent pilots. I don't think they're really lacking for damage. And Kai knows his job. Dax going in, run, stun, job's done. So yeah, just uh, you got adaptation. that. You just got that quirky building blighted crystal. Uh, is the only thing. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> kind of wacky, but pretty funny, you know. Yep, yep. With that, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break, folks. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hop on over to fofesports.com. Check out the FOF Connect. Check out all the extra little stuff we got on there. Uh, to browse the merch store and whatnot. We will be right back with an interview with our winners. <laughs>
Hello everyone, Chris Edgeworth here with our third interview for real this time tonight. And this time I'm joined by Escape of Blue Bayou Zoo. Welcome, how are you feeling? Oh, it's a it's a team of double agents, but uh, <laughs> I'm feeling very good. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with how that game went. There was a, a lot of good things to be seen there. Let's uh, let's start off by uh, giving our thanks to uh, the most rich, the most benevolent, the the most faithful man in the chat out there, Bill the Pony, coming up big on the Gamba. Yeah, eighteen thousand to one odds. That's it's <laughs> a pretty good deal. I really appreciate it, Bill. Uh, having the faith right there wasn't a lot of faith, but hey, you cashed in. That's pretty damn good. Damn, that is. Uh... That, what was his what was his final payout? I it's, I, I think it, I think the total points was eighteen thousand and one bet, and oh he was the one. Oh, so he okay. just walked away with all of it. Hell yeah, let's go, right on. Well, uh, let let's talk about the game itself. Uh, talk about this draft here, if you would, and the preparation. Um, Fang pulled out the Nocturne. He was prodigiously uh, trying to flip that light switch on and off as fast as he could, but in the end, it wasn't enough. You folks had uh, the double marksman uh, with the Aphelios in your hands, Mezuzah in the mid lane with Corky, and then just some meaty dudes out in front. You got Orn and uh, definitely not Orn with the Udir form of Orn, and then uh, Nautilus to just sort of be the big beefy anchor on the, on the outside as well. Uh, what was your thoughts on putting this draft together and what you ended up up against? Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit strange at first because uh, they, they missed a lock-in, so T.O. unable to lock in his own picks. As uh, as I've mentioned before on broadcast, Brendan never makes mistakes, so that's not his fault. Um, but it, it was a little bit awkward for them to, to go into the draft. Usually, it's a little bit worrying to leave uh, big prior picks up like that. Um, but uh, nobody took like the misfortune or the poppy or anything like that, so uh, it, it kind of didn't change the, the, the draft all too much. I don't imagine a lot of our picks that we ended up picking would have gotten banned anyway. Um, but no, we, we just uh, really early on in the draft, we realized that they wanted to dive. Obviously, Nocturne can only really do one thing and just go sug sug. Um, but uh, immediately following that with Lulu Cog, they had a really big discrepancy in how they wanted to play their draft. So we just played a composition that would um, allow us to either play well into Kogma and thus two of their champions can't do what they want to do or play well into their front line and not let Kogma do what he wants to do. And so they were, they had a really big discrepancy in how they wanted to play the game. And I think we were just able to play our team fights the way we wanted to. And the, the their draft breaking themselves that made it really hard for them to get anything done. And then we also had some fantastic mid game. And uh, yeah, let's uh, from there, let's pivot into talking about yourself, uh, which was a a stable presence throughout this game because uh, you were just uh, hitting these Ophelia's ultimates like clockwork. And part of that, of course, is the marksman's aim. They were, of course, in the end, uh, just kind of conga lining at a certain point. They, they weren't, uh, there wasn't the trigger discipline, uh, rather, for them to stay out of the line of sight or altogether for you to get some of these massive ultimates. What was it like uh, playing Mr. 200 Years himself in this game? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, it's it's uh, right up there with the, the, the dopamine levels. Like, it, <laughs> there's a couple of those ulties that were able to really swing fights. I think that's why we got access to Dragon Number 2 that game was just a really, really big Inferno multi that was able to chunk down everyone to below 500 HP or something in that range. Um, and then from that point forward, the enemy team, uh, just all of SLR got a little bit nervous and they got really focused on trying to dive the Aphelios. And I've got a fantastic front line who can hold them all in the same spot for me. And then that just kind of lines them up on their own. So uh, it is on the one hand, it, it's very much on them to try and peel themselves away, but uh, they they needed to dive forward and kill uh, myself and Mizuza in order to win those fights and they couldn't get access to us. And a mixture of the big one uh, off of the Corky ulti and the Inferno ulti is just blew the enemy team off the map and it was uh, uh, a very very big uh, serotonin dopamine rush it was very fun uh before we step away uh, this was of course a dominating win here for you folks but it was a different flavor in the end from from last week in certain regards uh, what, what what are your thoughts on this yeah, I, I, we had a lot of time to just go and look at what we did wrong last week. And uh, it's very obvious to say this, but no one was happy. Um, we were in a, a really upset position. Um, just nobody likes to lose, but especially nobody likes to lose when you know you could play better. Um, and so I think everyone did a really good job of reflecting back and, and looking at how they played. And we made some differences in uh, how we wanted to play the game today uh, that 
uh, and just had some better mindsets towards it, really. I think it really showed in our, our mid-game coordination and how we were able to play our team fights. We were playing a lot more reserved into our win conditions, and I think that this this isn't... Um, I think this is a big step to make in, in a matter of, what, six days? Um, but I, I think that improvement is something that we're going to be able to continue to do throughout the season, and I'm, I'm really happy that everyone was able to make those steps to be stronger, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to how we continue, uh, continue to grow. Right on. Well, Escape, thank you so much for this interview. Before we step away, your opportunity for any final thoughts, any shout-outs, any banter you'd like to leave with us? Well, um, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just throw throw this one out there that I think this is my point over Luru. Uh, Luru and I have kind of been trading them back and forth for a little bit now, so I'm going to take this one as my step up the ladder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> your move next, Isaiah. And then um, I, I am still, though I am a member of BBZ, I am not without my pass, so uh, another dub for the Ruby League server. Let's keep them going. There it is. All right. Well, folks, we're going to take a short break, then we're going to run it back with the final game of the night, game four, coming at you very soon, so don't go too far.